All right. Uh, so again, I encourage you to, to share with your friends. If you're, uh, if you're on, you're watching, share the feed, and uh, let's have a, have a conversation about the, the future of Appalachia. Hey, we really want to, uh, we really just want to make this uh, this weekly update a, a focus on uh, on the future and what people are doing across the region to make that happen. Uh, today we'll be talking a little bit uh, about what we've done over the last week and where we're going uh, the upcoming week. And this week we can catch us um, and uh, and then just open it up for discussion. We want to hear what's happening. Uh, in your communities and with your organizations. Um, so jump on, share, uh, post where you're from, and we'll just have a, have a great, great discussion. We have our, uh, we have our impact report. Uh, this is the physical version of it. We have that out now. It's in print. Uh, you can find an electronic version on our website. If you wonder what happened last year, what we were involved in, again, you can find that at soar-ky.org forward slash impact. Um, we just posted a video earlier on our Facebook feed, uh, on our Facebook, uh, uh, our, our wall, our page. Um, so you can see the video and uh, see some of the highlights of the exciting things from last year. But we're, we're finished with 2017 and we're ready to start thinking about 2018. We talk uh, all the time about how um, it, yeah, we there were some successes last year. We've had a success this week, but as you know, um, you're you're only as good as the most recent thing you've done, and you've got to continually be thinking about what's next and where you go from here. Uh, and we obviously believe that uh, this year is going to be a good year, and there's a lot of great things that that we can do. And as we always share, there's a lifetime worth of work to be done in Appalachia, Kentucky. We're up against a lot of challenges. Uh, but we do this show, we do this, uh, we do this work because we believe uh, there's a future in Appalachia and there's a lot of people that agree with us uh, and that are working and doing some great things in your community. So if you hear that and you say, well, I don't know what that means. What can I do in my community? Or maybe you're working on a project in your community or maybe you're a small business owner and you've got some questions you'd like to ask about resources or how to get more involved. Um, and I'd be happy to address those questions if you'll post them in the... In the, in the feed, if you've got questions about SOAR, if you've got questions about uh, a project or uh, anything along those lines, I will, uh, I'll do my best to address them. If you want to post them in the, the comments, I'm watching. We've had several people join. Good to see you guys. Again, share it if you don't care. Uh, we just want to get the word out and be able to connect with, uh, connect with people and hear their, hear their thoughts, hear their stories uh, about their communities. Um, so again, share it. We'd be happy to, to take any questions you might have. I'm traveling some this week. Going to be in uh, going to be in Hyden in Leslie County on Thursday. Um, so if you're if you're around there and you want to come to the uh, come talk to me in person, I'll be there uh, with the the Leslie County Chamber, uh, Hyden Leslie County Chamber. I think we're meeting at the uh, Red Light Cafe, I believe is the name of it. Uh, so it starts at noon. Come by and see us. We'll have a, a great discussion. Um, next week, I am uh, going to be in Frankfurt on Tuesday, uh, having some meetings with legislators, just talking about issues pertinent to, to Appalachia and our community. Um, and then uh, that the end of that week, I'll be traveling to uh, to Boston to speak at a, a conference uh, talking about Appalachia, sharing the story, sharing the positive story, the good things that are happening uh, in our community. Again, SOAR, we try to do three things, drive action um, and get other people involved to be a part of the team uh, to do uh, aligned projects in their community. And uh, we try to be a champion. We try to promote and inspire Appalachia, tell the positive stories that are happening here. And we also, uh, we also work to grow the team. We want a bigger network, a stronger network of people working together to do that. Uh, we've had several new uh, Blueprint partners that have joined in the, the, the last little bit. And uh, if, if you don't know what that is, you can go to our website and, uh, and find that information, soar-ky.org. 
um, uh, forward slash uh, partner. So you can go on, if you're an individual, an organization, and you say, well, I care about the future of my community. I've got kids that, and I have this with my neighbors, uh, have it in our own family. Uh, we see that uh, our ki their people's kids are making decisions, tough decisions of whether to stay in Appalachia or whether, whether to move. Um, or they go to college and they wish they could come back, but they don't think they can. Uh, we're finding more and more that we're creating opportunities to, to start to shift that trend. Um, and, you know, I'm an example of that somewhat. Um, I really never left. I'm born in Appalachia, from Appalachia, and uh, started out at Pikeville College, then went to Morehead State University, graduated from there, and I've been back here my entire career. Um, and I found a lot of opportunity from a, being a small business owner all the way to doing economic development things. I never, I did not, uh, I did not when I was in kindergarten say I want to be the executive director of SOAR when I grow up. I uh, did not say I want to do economic development when I grow up. Uh, but you, there is opportunity to be found in Appalachia and we want to share that story. Um, so. Those are the three things that, that we do. Again, if you have questions or uh, you need updates on projects, um, we'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, we've got Matt Brown on here. I'll talk about uh, a little project we've been involved with him uh, and addiction recovery cares. We've been working over in, uh, in Letcher County put together what's called the Kentucky River um, Substance Abuse Consortium. So we're, we're working uh, People talk a lot about the, the drug problem in Appalachia. Well, we think we've got our arms around a solution. And the solution uh, is at the grassroots community level. Uh, so we're back live. Uh, had a little battery problem. Um, like, as in problem, I mean it died. And uh, so we're plugged back up. And we just want to we want to talk about Appalachia. We had a good group in. <coughs> Hate it, we lost you. Um, so if you're still out there in social media world and want to join, we'd encourage you to, to jump back on and we'll, um, and we'll have a conversation. Love to hear some questions and just get into a conversation. That's really what we want to use these for, uh, to, to talk about the work that we're doing. More importantly, the work that, that you're doing um, or that maybe things you'd like to see done. Uh, and we could just talk about, talk about that if you've got a... a, a We've got some of our partners in here. Uh, hey, there's Scott. Uh, good to have Scott Vance on. Uh, Scott's been a longtime partner of SOAR with Passport Health Plan. They've, uh, they've been a partner from the beginning. He's volunteered at a lot of events, and they always show up. I uh, appreciate all you do, Scott. Um, I think they're hiring a position right now. Uh, so you may want to check out Passport Health Plan. I believe they've got a a job opening in, uh, in Prestonsburg if they've not filled it yet. Uh, so definitely check them out. Um, so sorry we dropped out. Uh, we're, we're back on. We're live now. Um, so start the conversation. Ask some questions. Um, I'd be happy to, to talk about, hey Brenda, uh, got two positions, Scott said. So if you need a job and you're in the Prestonsburg area, Passport Health Plan's got two positions open. Uh, health education, I believe. Um, so if you know anybody with a public health degree or uh, experience in that realm, uh, they, they're looking for a couple positions. So uh, definitely jump in there. Um, love to have a, a conversation. If anybody has any questions or comments, um, we'd be happy to, to answer those. Play us some funky music. Uh, you know, I've got a... Uh, if, if you don't know, I'm a kind of a musician, uh, a recovering musician, um, and I've got a Fender Road sitting in my office. I might bring it in one day, or we might do the show back there. We might play some music. Uh, that might be fun, uh, and we'll we'll do that. Kyle, you got it. Uh, if I had it in here, I'd actually play some funky music, uh, and we would have some fun. Uh, got Jamie Conley on here. I saw he'd join. I don't know if he's still here. Went to high school with him. He was a drummer in my band in high school. Uh, but 
So let, let's talk about the future of Appalachia. Do we think there is one? Uh, obviously, I do. Obviously, so does. Um, and we want you to know the different things we're working on to do it. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got, you know, we've got a plan, and that's this blueprint. It's not beautiful. It's not a lot of pictures, um, but the content is uh, is pretty strong about what we think needs to be done in the region. And every community, our hope is that every community will be working on these goals and trying to do projects around these goals. And we want to help you do that. And uh, so we're going to start, uh, hopefully in our next episode, we'll have a, a partner on the show with us to talk about what they're doing in their community. We'll talk about how they started their business. We'll talk about uh, maybe a story of, uh, of, of what they did in their community, whether it was starting a farmer's market or a, uh, a, a, um, a tourism project. Uh, Josh in our office, he went down last night to, uh, uh, where was that meeting, Josh? In Stanton, the Red River Gorge. Stanton, Stanton. Red River Gorge, they're working on putting their uh, a chamber together, uh, kind of a regional chamber focused on the Red River Gorge area. You ever been to Red River Gorge? Anybody on the, everybody listening, ever been to Red River Gorge? Yes, no, yes, maybe, nobody, yes. Uh, and many of you have driven through it, I'm sure, but uh, Bethany and I, actually, my wife, we went down, uh, I guess it was last, it was last year sometime. We said, we're not going out of town. We are going to, uh, we're going to go to Red River Gorge and spend the weekend. And we did it. We rented a cabin. Uh, her, uh, our little girl, she's eight. We said, let's go and just pretend like we're at a destination. And we didn't have to pretend because it was. It was awesome. It was great food. Uh, we found all these restaurants. But once we were there for, we stayed two nights, I think, so three days, you start finding all these cool restaurants kind of off the beaten path and thrift stores. We love thrift stores. Um, and uh, good pizza up at the Gorge. I think we did hit Miguel's. Uh, there's a little coffee shop there. Um, we, uh, let's see, we ate at, I can't remember the name of the restaurant that's at the end of the gorge. Um, gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was really good. I had a jalapeno cheddar, uh, some kind of hot dog. Uh, it was really good. But we had a great time. So they're working to figure out, uh, you know, one of our goals in the blueprint is that we believe Appalachia can be a destination. Tourism, we have seven goals, that's one of them. Um, and that type of work is really, uh, is really important. Now you got to find a way to capitalize on it though. I had a, had a guy tell me one time, uh, he's talking about Paintsville Lake. He said, you know why they never make any money at Paintsville Lake? Uh, and we're like, no, he's like, cause there's nowhere to spend it. And, uh, that was an interesting take on it for me is that if you're going to build up a, a tourism economy, there's got to be things in your community for people to spend their money on and do, whether it's adventure tourism things, whether it's uh, zip lining, uh, whether it's food, whether it's shopping, um, a place, nice place to stay. Uh, you got to have those types of pieces in place. So let's talk about tourism. Really hadn't planned on that today, but um, so if you look at if you look in our, our blueprint, which is not uh, a blueprint that I wrote, uh, this was taken from, we listened all over the region and kind of just put all the information together. Um, if, you, if you look at uh, tourism, so here are some of the objectives that, that we think have to happen. Uh, we need to support projects that leverage existing assets to create attraction destination based economic activity. We want to be a destination. And we want private businesses to be a part of that. Uh, so through private businesses such as theme parks, resorts, ATV trails, uh, things, of, things of that nature. The, uh, the second objective is to improve regional branding um, and marketing efforts to increase awareness and demand for recreational activities. Uh, so to have a, uh, a regional brand is an important part of this, a destination, people know where you're going, where they're going, and really ever is a county a brand, although that's sometimes the way we've tried to brand ourselves, 
we really got to think outside of that and think if you're an outsider or if you're not from the region, where do you want to go? What do you want to see? We obviously have some beautiful, beautiful scenery here. Um, local arts and crafts is an important part of that. Downtown spaces, you know, we need to rebuild our downtowns and focus on arts and heritage and entertainment um, and, and downtown spaces. You know, when you're connected, uh, well, we really think the, the future of Appalachia hinges on community, not really county, although we associate a county with a community. Uh, most of the time, uh, downtowns are going to be the places that have the, the ability to thrive and become the place, the economic hub for the county. So there's got to be focuses, there's got to be a focus on community uh, development. Uh, build upon regional assets that create unique identities for communities. What makes your community different than the one, two counties over? What do you have that's different? You know, uh, we're, we're here in, in Pikeville right now, and they, uh, you know, the Hatfield-McCoy story happened here. It didn't happen anywhere else. Uh, so that's a, that's a great, uh, unique identity for, uh, for Pikeville. Uh, we've been down to uh, Middlesboro and and uh, and down in Bell County. They're at the Cumberland Gap. You don't have that anywhere else. Uh, Harlan County. They've got the uh, Portal 31, the the deep mine. You can go back in and tour, uh, and it is uh, it is an awesome thing to have and to see and be a part of. Uh, so, what are the unique things in your community that, that make it different? How do you leverage those? It's almost like a business. You got to differentiate yourself, um, and then make sure we're training people to have hospitality, and we see that happening. Uh, we see that happening. So, any thoughts on tourism ideas, questions? Uh, does anybody have any any uh, any questions for me? Any questions for Soar? Uh, suggestions of topics you think we could talk about? Uh, in future, future editions. Uh, Brenda says, "Sounds great. We can all learn from each other. That's definitely what this is. That's what SOAR is all about. Um, SOAR is a network of people who want to learn from each other. And you know, we may disagree on some things, but we all agree that there's a future in Appalachia. And uh, then we begin the debate of, of how we put that together. But we've come a long way from that." Uh, we know what needs to be done, and uh, at this point, we're just we're working it, uh, which is exciting, uh, exciting to see happening. So I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. I know I got kicked off there a little bit earlier, uh, and I don't know I don't know if you've been watching the entire time, um, but we learned a little lessons about batteries; they die. And uh, so our camera died, and so we got we hooked up to power now, um, and we're gonna like I said we'll be doing these consistently, uh, but love to just have a conversation about the work that SOAR does and the work that you're doing. Um, let me know what community you're from. I see some people on here that I may not know uh, where you're from. Some I do, uh, but we'd love to know what community you're from. Uh, Obviously, one of the big things we've talked about for a long time is broadband um, and access to broadband, affordable, available, high-speed broadband. Uh, and you got to have that in your community. Um, so if you've got any, uh, that's Justin Prater from Pikeville. Hey, son, what are you doing? Uh, Justin Prater is the, uh, is, is the drone master. Uh, he's had some awesome videos. Uh, you might as well, Justin, go ahead and do a shameless plug here and tag your uh, your videos by Justin in a, in a comment here so people can go look at it. He's done some awesome stuff. He's got a lot of great uh, flood footage. Um, I was kind of watching the, the work that he was he was doing. He, he works for one of the Innovation Network offices, uh, the one at UPI. They're a, they're a blueprint partner. Um, they are doing great work helping small businesses. If you own a small business and or you're thinking about starting a business, Justin's a great place uh, to, to stop. Uh, I got uh, I got Chad Webb here. Chad and I were actually uh, sweet mates 
at UPIC years and years ago. Um, what are some of SOAR's strategies focusing on improving quality of life in order to attract young professionals uh, to the area? Um, so, yeah, that's a great question. And a lot of our strategies, they revolve around tourism. So definitely redeveloping downtowns, uh, focus on arts and crafts, uh, connection to broadband. So you've got... Uh, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do uh, as part of this is, uh, is to uh, create co-working spaces in downtown so that you could have young professionals that are working for different companies, maybe working remotely or doing startups, but just a place for them to get together and work together. Uh, we're getting ready to build a couple of these out and I'll, we think it's going to work. Um, but we know that's important. So access, internet access, Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, networking events, uh, rebuilt downtowns that uh, are you, you can't have. You know, vacant buildings uh, that are run down. Uh, Main Street programs are great. If your community does not have a Main Street program, it's a great opportunity to raise some money. Um, it, at a uh, to, to do things like facade fix up so uh, you can repaint downtown. I tell you, a great town to uh, and a contact to talk to about that is uh, is Pineville over in Bell County. J Jacob Rohn is their Main Street director. They just received an award. Uh, they've done a lot of great things. They've got privately owned restaurants downtown. <coughs> they uh, a local guy came back, reinvested in the community, re. Uh, modeled one of the, the buildings downtown. They rehabbed uh, an old theater that was downtown. They're having weekly, monthly events there at the theater and bringing people back into the community. Uh, so th those are some things that, that I see see people uh, taking action on that are making a difference. Uh, and, and Jacob's a young guy. He's in his community working, trying to make a difference. Um, so... Uh, using Pikeville as a blueprint, how can we work closely with other counties to make industrial parks more relevant across the region? Uh, so there's a lot of talk about industrial development and you know, Pikeville has had some success recently, uh, but it, it, it takes a tremendous amount of investment up front and work and strategic planning and thought process. Um, so in Pikeville, they've had uh, the Inner Blue announcement, which is the battery factory. They've had the uh, the local company that's starting. Uh, it's it's a company that's been in existence for decades. They're branching out and doing a whole new uh, a whole new business. Um, that one is Silver Silver Liner, and uh, they're making truck bodies and 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 uh, uh, tanker trucks, I believe. Uh, they've had App Harvest, uh, so all of these companies. So let, let's let's think about industrial development and industrial park. What it has to have to be competitive. Uh, one, you got to have available property. Uh, it's got to be. Uh, it has to have. Um, it not only has to be available, but it's got to be priced competitively. It has to have restrictions so that if an industrial company locates there, it knows that a residential or a, a school's not gonna go in beside. You can't have mixed use. If it's gonna be in a, in a manufacturing focused site, then there's gotta be covenants and restrictions. So that's why we have industrial parks. Um, so it's gotta have all that. Uh, it's gotta have key infrastructure. It's gotta have water, not just and this is what happened to us sometimes is we built water to our industrial parks but we didn't take into account the amount of water that a client would need and we we didn't have and this was years ago we've done a lot of this work updating these parks in the last four to five years um, to be able to speak clearly about how many or how much water uh, capacity is available per day when these companies are looking at locating, they send a spreadsheet out traditionally that is a request for a proposal, a request for information that says we got to have 200,000 gallons per day. Can you check this box if you can provide that? And if you can't answer those questions, they also ask about sewer, they ask about power, they ask about broadband, and, and you know, 
Brady Industries is located up in Ashland. They're an aluminum mill. First thing they ask about, broadband connectivity. Can we get connected to fiber? Uh, so no matter what the business is, they've got to be connected there. And many companies have to have natural gas. So to have a truly competitive industrial park, to be competitive, because you're not just competing with the community, uh, you know, uh, two counties over. These are most of the time national projects you're competing against. You're definitely competing against other people in the state. So the Bowling Greens, who have thousands of acres and the excess utilities and infrastructure, uh, they just, you go to their website, they have all their information there. We were at times scrounging at the last minute trying to figure out what do we have, what can we do. Uh, but uh, with the advent of uh, several organizations that have stepped up and, uh, and been helping out on that end, we now have some parks that are competitive uh, and being more and more competitive, they're getting certified, uh, they're going through the process, they're checking all the boxes, they're knowing all the answers. Uh, we got groups like One East Kentucky and, uh, and SCED um, that, uh, that are working to promote these industrial parks, they're meeting with CEOs, they're doing site visits. Uh, and then they work with the local community. Uh, most of these decisions are made, uh, we found out from consultants, they say uh, desktop decisions. You can find all, if, if you're going to buy a car uh, this weekend, I would 99%, I'm 99% sure you wouldn't just show up at a car lot and start talking to somebody. Uh, I don't know the real number, but pretty much uh, I would know I would go online. You would go online if you're going to buy a house. You go online, you look at Zillow, you look at whatever the local MLS is and you search. They do the same thing. Industrial clients do that. The consultant, site consultants do that. The data has to be available online. What we have in Eastern Kentucky and Appalachian Kentucky that's actually on our side uh, is a workforce. Uh, the numbers I'm hearing is that that Louisville has 30,000 unfilled jobs. And our best estimate in Eastern Kentucky is that we've got 30,000 people that need a job. Um, so these companies are beginning to look in Appalachia, but we have to be ready at the community level. At the community level, you've got to be ready uh, to have the, the, the parks uh, site certified and ready to go, ready to show and you've got to have data ready available. There's Colby. Colby's a project manager with One East Kentucky, um, and uh, so he, he knows that work. He deals with clients uh, all the time. So if you're a community and you're trying to figure out, is my park competitive? Do I have enough acreage? Um, then you want to contact somebody like Brett Traver at SCED, who's one of our partners, or uh, Chuck Sexton at One East Kentucky. Um, or Colby, he also works there as a project manager. Uh, you could reach out to the Cabinet for Economic Development. Um, uh, oh my gosh, that's tough. Describe a 21st century Appalachia in one word. Uh, okay, I, here's, here's what it is for me, here's what we do and why we do it. Hope. That's it. Uh, I think we, we saw a lot uh, uh, there were a lot of times and days uh, before SOAR and before uh, you know, the leadership of Congressman Rogers and others that put the group uh, together uh, is that people felt like nothing was getting done, like we weren't making any progress, and like there was no hope, like the only option was to get out. Um, and uh, so uh, hope for me is a component of it. Uh, Justin puts it as change. I think we are seeing significant changes, and uh, I would agree with him uh, on that for sure. Change, progress, all of those line up for me. Um, feel free to, to share it. Uh, you know, I, I, I think one of the greatest things, the greatest changes uh, we've seen is this approach uh, that, that we're all in this together, that from the community level all the way up to the governor and congressman, Nobody's looking at each other saying, it's all up to you. We're all putting our own, we're putting our own skin in the game and saying, we got to take some ownership of our own future, uh, which is really what, uh, what SOAR is about. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, again, I'm taking questions. If you've got any, uh, feel free to, to, to post them on here. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, Babyville's trying to revitalize a former farmer's market program and possibly move to the downtown area. If you know an area that is excelling in that, would love to know who and where. Uh, several successful farmers markets in the region. Um, uh, Pikeville's got a pretty good one that's growing. Whitesburg has an awesome farmers market program. They're doing a lot of innovative stuff. Um, so you could you could reach out to the folks in Whitesburg, and uh, we'll try to get a contact for you there and uh, send it. That was Brenda Begley, I believe, that had made that comment. Um, uh, so there's lots of different funding, there's lots of different strategies, and farmers markets are either, they're either great or they flop. Um, so it'd be great to talk to somebody who's been successful in them to make sure, uh, to figure out what those key components are. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle uh, when you're putting a farmers market together. Uh, regional foods, that's one of our goals, um, is to, to grow that food system. We focus on the economic side of it. Uh, I can, I can, you know, I've got a garden at home and uh, anything, any kind of plant that you can put in the ground and come back in a few months and there's food on it, I can garden that with the best, like a green thumb. So I can grow tomatoes. Um, I, I don't really know how to garden that well. But, so what I'm trying to say is we don't focus on teaching people how to garden. We think if people have a market, if they can make money growing tomatoes, corn, vegetables, um, then there will be, people will grow it. They'll find out, they'll figure out. I mean, my, grand, my, my grandfather had a farm growing up. Uh, it's what we did here. Um, we grew our own food. Um, so we focused on how do we get people access, and that's a farmer's market. It's a great way for them to be able to go and sell uh, their items. Another part of regional foods is how, how do we, do value added. How do we turn tomatoes into chili or salsa, barbecue sauce? How do we make soups? How do we can it? Uh, so you have things like community kitchens that are USDA certified so people can get in and do a test run and get it uh, get it marketed. And then you know I'd love to see I'd love to see a, a salsa company pop up and we're shipping it all over the country. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's that's some of the, the components of food and, and farmers markets. Farm to school programs are great. Uh, Valerie Horn, yeah, that's a great one. Community Farm Alliance, uh, she's led the Wattsburg Farmers Market work. Um, they've done some great stuff. Uh, so check, that's good, so you don't have to do it. We got people helping each other, that's what this is about. Um, Scott Vance, Passports Tagline, we're in this together. Um, uh, regionalism, we obviously believe in regionalism. So, and this is something I've been talking about for a lot of years and focus on is how do we, how do we work together regionally? And I've kind of come to this conclusion. I think we have to have a regional plan and a regional strategy. We have to be in communication and we have to understand what we're all working on and support each other and what we're working on. But at the end of the day, your local community and how much leadership and capacity you have there is going to be what makes the difference. Um, a regional organization, the, the state, the federal government, nobody can come in and fix and save your community. Uh, so we've got to have local people participating at the local level that have a vision, that know what's happening around them, that are part of this overall plan and are working it together. Uh, and we want to support those people. We want to connect you to more resources and make sure uh, this, this blueprint is a great way to say, well, what should I be working on? We're actually working on a, putting together a checklist you can use um, from the, this blueprint so that you can say, well, what am I doing in my community and what do we need to do next? Um, so those are, those are some great, uh, great comments. Amber Godsey, Erase County Lines, uh, great Yep, that's it, regionalism. We gotta think more about uh, our region and not focus on counties as much, but focus on community. Focus on community. 
Where do we get a copy of the blueprint? I'm going to see if I can share a link here. Um, there it is. I just put the, the link on there. I put a link on the the uh, the Facebook feed, um, and you can click on it. We've got kind of a web version of it that you can go through and see, uh, or you can download the PDF and, and look at that. Uh, it, it's pretty uh, it's it's pretty holistic. It looks it doesn't say that you know tourism's the only thing we got we need to do in Appalachia. It doesn't say we you got to recruit more companies. It doesn't say. Um, we only need broadband. It doesn't say we need to just help small businesses. It says we need to do all this as a region. All of this has to happen at the same time, which means there's going to be certain organizations and certain people who are passionate about one component of it, and we need you to be working on that component of it. And you need to know that you're part of a team that's working on a much bigger effort. Uh, hey, no problem. Thanks, Justin. Uh, good things happening. Thanks you. Thanks for being on and being part of the conversation. We will keep it up. Um, so there's the blueprint. Uh, feel free to, you know, this it's a fun read. Uh, we encourage you to, to check it out uh, and think about what does this mean? What does this mean? And we got examples of other projects and solutions, as we call it, that line up with it that you can read about on there and links to them. And we're going to be doing some more of that. Uh, I think I've answered about all the the questions. Have you got any numbers or just from what you've seen, can you tell if the new right-to-work laws and the exit of prevailing wages hurt or help the area or not far enough along to be able to see that yet? Uh, yep, yeah, no, I don't think we're far enough into it yet to, to see any, any impact on that end. Uh, obviously, that can get really divisive and you got two people, two sides that really think both sides are 100% right. Uh, but I don't think we've been able to see uh, directly any specific impact uh, or to be able to talk to it. We've obviously heard some of the companies that have located here that have said right to work has been part of the, their decision making process of why they chose to locate here. Um, we, we just, uh, so not enough information, I don't think, yet to speak specifically to that. I think I'm about to wrap this thing up. Um, unless anybody's got uh, some, some last minute, one last question, if anybody has something, I'd be happy to address it. Uh, we're going to try to get these on a specific schedule so that we can, we can kind of jump on consistently, and then we'll catalog them, or maybe we'll try to s stick to a topic each time. Uh, we can just continue to keep sharing the information uh, with each other and start making, uh, continue making some progress. So one last call for a question if you've got one. Uh, if not, we'll plan on being back on next week. If you want to keep updated, we're going to try to get emails out when we're going to be doing it. Uh, make sure you sign up on the partnership program. I'll share the link to that as well. Um, I just put that in the uh, the stream. Um, so, some good conversation, good discussion today. Uh, uh, thanks, Kyle. Appreciate you. Um, hey, the Letcher overlooks. I did that. You, oh, you you you're making fun. I think uh, you're reminding me. Or oh, you watched my video uh, from the overlooks. They are definitely impressive. Uh, you got to go see those on Pine Mountain. They're getting a shout out every time. So. Uh, any anything else? Any other questions? We're gonna wrap it up. All right. Remember, there's a future in Appalachia. Thanks, guys.